Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 114. TidyX is a screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. And my name is Ellis Hughes. And you may notice that we are missing one of our, or my co-host, uh, Patrick. He is otherwise occupied right now. So we're going to take a little step away from talking about S4 objects to actually go in a little bit into a package that I've been developing over the last roughly two years or so. Um, and so I think that'll be helpful or hopefully it's helpful for folks. Um, I know it's it's been helpful for a number of people and it's it's gotten a little, uh, it's been shared a little bit. So I wanted to tell you my take on this package. So I'm gonna make my screen a little bit smaller here. So the package that I'm going to be talking about today is called Camcorder. Um, so this is available on my GitHub right now, not on Cran. The plan is to put it on Cran shortly uh, we wanted, I wanted to be adding some tests and uh, more confirmation that the behavior of the package is consistent across multiple OSs before I made it uh, fully available. But it has been around for a while and really the core code of it really hasn't changed in a number of years, basically since I first wrote it nearly two years ago. So it's, it's pretty stable and I've been adding new features lately. Um, the reason I created Camcorder was to help uh, two OGs of the Tidy Tuesday uh, movement. Um, so Cedric and Georgios have made some really, really cool uh, images over the last, I don't know, since Tidy Tuesday has been created, so like four years or so. Um, and what they would do is they... They've become like experts in ggplot and everything they make seems to be made with ggplot. They do these fantastic images. Um, but then the really cool thing after they do that is a couple days later, they would share these recordings of how they created those beautiful images. They would go through, hey, here's kind of, and it was really fun because you could kind of see where they were probing and looking at different ideas and exploring things as they went. And so I think as, um, people that maybe aren't as experienced in uh, visualization and whatnot can see that even these experts try a lot of different things or go down different paths as they're exploring the data and trying to visualize it. Um, and so I thought these GIFs were really cool. So I reached out to them and I actually found out um, that there was a, a bit of a conversation on Twitter where they were manually saving every single image that they would generate. They'd run uh, from ggplot to the ggsave function every single time. And I know Cedric, and I'm not sure about Georgios, but I know Cedric would save his plots as PDFs because he likes he liked the additional uh, resolution that he could get out of it. But in order to do that, he would then have to immediately open up the file after he saved it to check that, make sure that everything was displaying properly. And so it was a massive pain. So I made this package to try to help him out. Um, they've both kind of used it Throughout the last two years, you can see it in a lot of their code that they share online, uh, where at the very beginning you'll see library camcorder and then a function I'm going to talk about in a second. Um, so also, uh, this package was recently highlighted by Rami Crispin uh, on, on LinkedIn, so I thought that was really fun to see that he he also saw that he he's a data science and engineering senior manager at Apple per his LinkedIn. Uh, but saw this package and decided to share it. And apparently a lot of people liked it. I think uh, this is showing 226 people other than myself uh, liked this post. And so I appreciate everybody sharing this. Rami, I appreciate you uh, sharing this package out with folks. Um, and I do plan on continuing to develop this package. So the reason that I made this package was, you know, I saw Cedric and Georgios were having, you know, difficulties with having to, to save their own work. Um, but my thought behind the package is plot making is an iterative process as we see through their GIFs or is if you've ever developed your own images, um, it's not like you make the perfect image on, on try one. It's you're usually exploring things, trying to figure out how things are going to visualize, uh, adding new layers, adding new text and whatnot. And so we needed a package to facilitate them, but understand that it's an iterative process. It's not one and done. Um, and then the tools in R are to make plots are incredibly powerful. There's a lot of different ways you can make plots, a lot of different function or a lot of different packages in R to help you make plots. So camcorder is going to have to be able to, to work across all those different medium. Um, and typically the way people will view their plots while they're iterating is in the R studio viewer, which don't get me wrong is super powerful as well as the plots pane. So the, these two guys here, 
Um, oh, I guess you couldn't see that there. So let's hit plots this tab and then the viewer viewer tab. Um, unfortunately, they're not ideal because it's going to resize the image and change the image based on the actual size of the pane that you have right here. So it's potential that the plots that you're generating aren't going to be showing in the correct ratios as you're trying to actually save them. Then uh, it's going to save it not in the actual file format that you plan on viewing it in or saving it in. And so there can be differences with that, such as uh, PDF actually allows you to set different uh, text uh, families that won't get displayed as easily in the, the viewer over, over there. Um, and then also, I didn't want to make it so you manually had to save the image uh, to open and view it. Uh, and changing the sizes of your saved image isn't simple. I wanted to make it so it could do so. So this is how, th these are like the thoughts and the things I kept in mind when I made Camcorder. So let's go really through a really simple example of creating a really, really basic ggplot. So we're going to load the library ggplot2. We're going to use the cars data, which is a base R um, data set from the data sets package. And it's got two columns, speed and dist. And so we're going to take ggplot, going to add a new layer called geom point, And we're going to set the aesthetics to x being speed and y being distance, because the, the x impacts y. In this situation, I want to understand how speed impacts distance. So we can run that and great, here's our viewer. As we can see though, it, we can change the viewer size over on the right and things get stretched or, or slightly change how the actual plot gets displayed. So I'd wanna see how it would be viewed by, you know, when I save it and, and share it out. So I can use ggsave and send it to a temporary directory and using the device Cairo PDF, which is a, um, a good way to save it but as you can see, ggsave also takes the uh, size of the viewer here when I save it. So here it saved it as a 2.12 by 1.33 inch image. When I rerun this, it's now changed the size. And that's actually a really good default. I like, I think that's a good idea that it does that. That way um, it doesn't have to make uh, assumptions about the, uh, make a, assumptions about a good default, but um, it can change then the, the plot that you get by simply changing your viewer in our studio. So let's do this. I'm gonna I'm running a Windows machine so I can use shell.exec exec to uh, open this PDF for me. Um, on a MacBook, I don't know, or a Mac, I don't know if that this holds true. But as you can see, I saved the plot here. Um, it looks okay, but I might want to make edits to it later. I'm gonna quickly remove this so I can move forward. Um, so instead, this is what your workflow might look like if you're using camcorder to, to make your life easier. So we're going to call library camcorder. And before you actually start making your plots, what you're going to do is call the GG record, set your device. And you can also set a lot of other defaults as well, such as the directory you want to be saving your intermediate plots to. So you might, by default, it goes to a temporary directory but you might actually want to set it to be a directory um, in your working, uh, a subdirectory of your working directory or something like that. And then it's got all the other options that exist in a GG save. And this will then automatically apply to all the plots that you create as you go. So I'm just going to leave it using the basic ones um, and then set GG record to use the device Cairo PDF. And it's run. And so now, Camcorder's not running in the background, but has actually changed methods for ggplot2 in Patchwork, um, such that if you go to print a ggplot2 or Patchwork, it'll actually inject its own code in there and run and save this uh, plot for you. So let's see what this looks like using the same basic plot that we did before. And as you can see, it looks basically the same um, as we would expect it to because we haven't changed any of the code. But now I have wanted I wanted to add a label to this, so let's run that, and as you can see, it automatically opened up that PDF for me. So I didn't have to go out of my way to open and view this PDF. And so now I can just iterate as I go, go add an X intercept using GM VLINE. So there, it added the the VLINE at uh, twenty. Uh, don't need to close that. Then we will add a smoothing line uh, just so that we can show the pattern of speed versus stopping distance. Um, and here, oh, 
there we go. Now it's added the GM V line, or the, excuse me, the uh, GM smooth to my plot. Uh, now we're gonna add uh, X and Y labels to this um, to, to make the, the plot a little bit more clear what, what's going on here. Um, then we might add some theming to it. And in this case, I'm gonna add theme classic, but I'm also gonna set the base family, so the family text to be Times New Roman. So I'm gonna run that. And there we go, as we can see, it's set the, set the theme as well as updated the text to use Times New Roman, which is awesome. I think that looks really good. Uh, so now I'm done creating my plot. I've you know iterated a couple times and I think this is ready to send to a client or whatever. Uh, so we can call GG stop recording and this will stop recording all the plots. So now what I could do is if I wanted to see what it would look like in my RStudio viewer, I can rerun that code and as you can see, it's no longer impacting and no longer saving it for you. Uh, but importantly, you can view that even though I set this base family to be Times New Roman, this is why I like showing it um, or like displaying it in your PDF and showing exactly how you're going to view it and what that saved file looks like. Because here, this doesn't have the font family that we wanted to use. Uh, so that, that's kind of a pain. So cool. So now we've done all that. And we've got our final image um, saved. How do I create that GIF that um, Georgios and Cider create? And so we can use the GG playback function to do that. I'm gonna change the defaults to say, I want my first image duration to only be three frames. By default, a frame is a quarter of a second. So this is gonna show for, uh, the first image is gonna show for a very short amount of time before it moves on to show the rest of the images. So let's run this. So this is going to take all the images we created and layer it and show the order and what the final product would look like. So this is how you can use camcorder to go from your very basic plot and see the process as you go. And it's, it, it can help you tell a real story of what is this data? What am I looking for? As I, as I looked through this data and visualized, here's the things that I saw and here's the things that I wanted to highlight as I went. So uh, yeah, this is Camcorder, um, and thank you all for joining us for episode 114 of TidyX. As always, my name is Ellis Hughes. You can find me on Twitter at Ellis underscore Hughes. You can find Tidy Explained on Twitter at Tidy underscore Explained, or you can email us at tidy.explained at gmail.com. If uh, you found that this content or any other content from TidyX has been valuable to you, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, it, where we would appreciate if you do sign up to support us continuing to do this sort of work. Uh, thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.